In a year full of Korean films about the colonial era, The Last Princess has the unfortunate status of being the least distinguished. By its own admission, this is a period film that plays fast and loose with historical facts. Son Ye Jin plays Princess Dok Hae, who after the murder of her father is sent to Japan against her will, as she's been granted special status to be integrated into Japanese aristocracy. The villain of the movie is Han Tak Su, an evil collaborator played by Yoon Jae Moon, who is using the Japanese occupation to raise his status and to line his pockets. Though the film starts with the princess's royal childhood in the early 20th century, this is later revealed to be the first in a series of flashbacks as Korean journalist Kim Jong Ham tries to track down the whereabouts of the princess in the early 1960s. The journalist character, played by Park Ha Il, also appears in the flashbacks as a fictional childhood friend of the princess. And as the narrative progresses, the journalist to be also resurfaces as an active member of the Korean independence movement during the occupation. On the whole, the film plods along with stilted performances and dull direction. Only an attempt by the Korean underground to explode a bomb at a Japanese military ceremony and a subsequent plan to take Korea's royal siblings to Shanghai offers a modicum of excitement. The script and the acting often resemble an amateur theatre production. And whether it be the way she was directed or a personal choice, actress Sun plays the princess in an overly petulant manner. So despite being heroic, the title character often feels childishly self-indulgent. While the pacing of the film doesn't pick up, where it gets interesting is when the Korean War ends and the princess is denied a return to the land of her birth by the order of the newly established South Korean government. As she was a symbol of Korean identity, it's fascinating how the South Korean rulers of the 50s and 60s were willing to exclude the princess or anything else that was likely to interfere with their own power base. It's an intriguing counterpoint to the colonial story, which is the film's beginning. However, the emotion most likely to be felt while watching The Last Princess is disappointment. <laughs>